Ja. Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. I'm Walter Zagarevich. And I'm Nina Zagarevich. And in the other screen, you see this lovely couple, Tom and Bev, from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Thank you for joining us this morning. And before we go to Tom and Bev, please take one quick second Press that little share button. <laughs> yes, thank you, Brother Tom. Press that little share button so mm -hmm. that your friends could join us as together we pray for the nations, we pray for your needs, and we share some encouraging words. If you're watching on YouTube, please share the link with your friends and join the YouTube channel so that you can get notified every time we're on the air. If you're watching on LinkedIn, please also share the link so that others could be together with us in agreement, praying for the needs around the world. Well, God richly Amen. bless you. It is a good, beautiful morning here mm -hmm. in the West Coast of the United States. And we have with us, uh, <laughs> yes, look at the palm trees growing in Calgary. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Tom and Bev, uh, welcome. And this is the first time to have Bev on. So thank you for coming on. How are you? Well, thank you for inviting us. Um, yes, I, mean. I just want to mention it's our anniversary today. So oh, yes. I thought we should be together, right? <laughs> yes. Man, how many years is that, Beth? It's actually only 24. Wow, but that's a long time. Well, God bless you. God bless yeah. you. And congratulations. congratulations. Yes, uh, Bev and Tom, congratulations. God richly bless you. May this day be an exceptional day for an exceptional both of you. day of blessing. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. And Tom, how are you? <laughs> doing good, doing good. Uh, God is God is gracious and and um it's just a blessing to to be in this walk with the Lord because you know, in the time of despair and, and problems happen, we know that we have a a uh, place uh, refuge, uh, Psalm ninety one, our secret place that we could be with the Lord. So, yeah, it's uh, it's had its days and ups and downs, but we're doing better that way. Amen, amen. So praise God. Uh, it is wonderful to be together today and to celebrate your anniversary together online. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, um, for those of you that uh, uh, don't know who they are, Tom and Bab have been an integral part of the behind the scenes work of this ministry, as well as Tony and Marge's ministry. They've uh, helped the brother Tony and sister Marge Abram for many, many years, uh, uh, taking care of their online work, their website, their videos. And uh, they've also helped our ministry a whole lot. Um, and right. um, they've been uh, doing a lot of work with putting on the videos on YouTube and making sure that as many of you as possible would have access to these, not just to these videos, but the teaching videos. That's we right. have recorded many, many hours of teaching for uh, leadership training in Nepal, as well as in the Russian-speaking world, and uh, Brother Tom has helped us a lot with that, and so we thank both of you for this um, help, and we know that uh, um, that it's not easy sometimes because you've got another, you've got other work to do, and yet you stop. Uh, well, maybe you don't stop, but in between so many Where other you things, have that a you few do, minutes. <laughs> you, you put in a lot of time that you I'll have. See that. Three o'clock in the morning when I can't sleep. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, you've even hosted a couple of times. Yeah, uh, we appreciate that. We appreciate it. That's uh, so much. So and me. thank you. We may have to ask you to do some more of that. Well, we're we're glad that you folks have joined us, not just Tom and Bev, but all of you who may be on and will be on later. And we want to welcome you, whether you're watching in the U.S., Canada, Europe, uh, Latin America. And uh, we have been praying a lot for Ukraine lately. I just wanted to give a brief update on that. Uh, before we go further with uh, Tom and Bev, I just wanted to share, we have been praying for different areas um, of Ukraine particularly, but for the whole country and the region. And Kharkiv on the eastern side, uh, kind of northeast 
of um, from Kiev has been a very, very heavy battleground That's area. Right. The sad. whole region, just so we keep getting reports. And one of our pasture friends there has been injured on the front lines uh, just a couple of days ago. We're praying for, uh, well, maybe I better not mention his name, um, but we are praying for him and we are praying for um, for a place for him to be able to be operated. We're trying to help make connections there because a heart keep hospitals are overwhelmed and their ICUs have been shut down, unfortunately. There's no trauma center. There's no either. trauma center, which is very, very difficult. And so <clears throat> we're praying that uh, uh, Brother, uh, well, I was going to mention to him, That's is awesome. going to uh, be, uh, be able to... Uh, 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 to get to a place, um, um, he may have to be taken to Western Ukraine for treatment. But we are. But he needs an operation. He needs an operation. It appears he's got a broken collarbone. As he can use, use his arm right now. Um, but um, we're praying for uh, for him, and we're praying for, for. God will make a way for him to get that fixed. In amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And so um, Kharkiv has uh, had a lot of activity and maybe you've seen on some of the news that there have been some Russian generals that uh, I think one was killed. We thought he was arrested, but apparently he was killed. And I guess the chief of staff, uh, Putin's chief of staff was down there too and got injured. So um, a lot of stuff was happening in that area. And um, um, so we are praying for that whole region. You know, uh, some people wonder, is, is, is it even worth, uh, maybe it's not the word worth, but the prayer, are prayers even working? I mean, is it, are, are we wasting our time? We never waste our time in prayer. And let me tell you, the statistics we have are that over 9,000 uh, rockets, uh, ordnance of different types, and bombs that landed in Ukraine did not explode. Right. Of those, over four, at least 400 were um, rockets that were launched by aircraft. So um, don't tell me that isn't a God factor. Now, I know people try to explain. I mean, I've seen uh, things like, oh, the, the Russian trucks had ch cheap Chinese tires. That may be possible. I don't know. <laughs> uh, some people will say, well, you know, they just sent a bunch of conscripts, but they had a lot more men than the Ukrainians. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and and there's so many things. Some people kind of try to excuse this and that, but they never mentioned the God factor. There are many, many people praying around the world like you and I, and people in Ukraine are praying people. There is a strong church in Ukraine. Some of it may have been dispersed right at the moment because of the war. And so um, we talked to pastors, you know, the pastor in Kharkiv. It's a very large church. Uh, but uh, yesterday, they only had, uh, uh, they had over 200 people in the meeting. He said about 70 were believers that are part, local part of the church. The rest were all new people. And some of these are people from the bomb shelter underneath the church. So you're seeing this uh, in other cities as well, but maybe half of the congregants right now are totally new people uh, because part of the church is dispersed all over Ukraine. And even if they're within a city, a city like Kharkiv, if there's no public transportation, uh, you're talking about a city of a million and a half people before the war uh, to get from one end of the city to the other without public transportation, because most people don't have cars. Plus it's dangerous. <laughs> it's very difficult, if not dangerous, even if you could attend and would like to attend. Um, so and part of the building was uh, had um, the windows uh, blown, blown out, out. Uh, mm -hmm. about a week ago. Um, so it's, you know, rockets have been falling around there. And um, it's interesting because as we talk to the pastor there, oh, yeah, you know, everything is is normal. It's OK. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, and then he says, yeah, well, we had about three rockets fall today or six rockets or a eight rock i mean it's like you know they're getting he used says that's to that's normal uh, that's normal mm -hmm. but but it's uh, but it obviously it's not normal and um mm -hmm. then they, they they get up in the morning and and uh, call us said we're alive god has given us another opportunity another chance mm -hmm. to serve 
people. And that's what ministry is, serving people. So Tom and Bev, we're thankful for you being on here because that's what you have been doing um, for many years, you know, besides what you do locally in your community, you're doing much to help the nations around the world. And um, I have to say this, I know that Tom, that you've had on your heart for many, many years in Nepal and through what we've been doing in Nepal through training and teaching and ministry online, uh, we've been able to, you've been able to help and you've been a part of Nepal ministry now without physically getting there yet. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, but God bless you both. And thank you for being on. Would you, would you just share a bit with the folks, uh, what God's laid on your heart. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. Amen. Um, yes. Thank you again. Like Bev mentioned, a privilege to, to share. And while you mentioned being a part of the ministry, uh, I know it, it is, we don't really realize that, but it's like casting the seeds upon, you know, cast your bread upon the waters and they will return. So many, so, you know, just being a part of your ministry and supporting it, not, not just the back end stuff, but financially and prayers, you know, don't forget the one, two, three, um, that we are partaking in it. And, and um, yeah, if you can say uh, vicariously living through you folks and the other ministers like Pastor Deepak and, and Nepal and that, that, you know, that they're touching the people out there. And that, that, that to me is uh, a privilege and an honor that we can do that this day. Um, it's like the talents, we have all these talents that we're, we're reinvesting these talents out there. We're not burying it somewhere. And so that's a blessing in that sense that uh, we get to do that. Yeah, um, yeah, there's things on my heart, like we were we'll talk about Canada and the U.S., of course, and Nepal, India, uh, Pakistan. There's a brother who was asking for prayer. Uh, I'm sure you folks get a lot of it, and maybe they're watching later on here or now. Yeah, hold fast, hold fast. God is faithful. You have to hang on. Uh, I, I want to share some just some simple verses just to hang on to, because that's part of the prayer is, is to offer your request to the Lord, but he likes, if I can say it this way, our father, God likes to hear his word being spoken back to him, you know, and, and that just uh, reinforces some of the things that we have with the father. And it's a relationship that we can, Hey, thank you, Lord, that you promised these things to us. And so that's what I was mentioning. And, and um, the biggest one is that uh, we have somebody to go to. We were actually just <laughs> part of our little, running around this morning we we're doing our devotions in hebrews and it was talking about jesus being the mediator between man and christ without the shedding of blood there's no, no remission of sins and and so that is so true and then timothy speaks of that so we can go to the father uh boldly now like it says uh through the blood of christ because we have been purchased with jesus's um death and resurrection so that's the privilege we have and now what do we do with it we share this with others and that's what you folks have been doing and brother tony that's a privilege working with him and and marge there and other ministries uh sometimes you, you know you got all these big names out there but it's the small down-to-earth folks that actually do a lot more because they're more the rubber hits the road with you folks so uh, you know thank you again for including us in here honey do you want to share anything <laughs> i'm supposed to be nice the way i introduce her praise the lord uh, when you were sharing earlier about our prayers being effective, um, yes, yeah, sometimes we don't see the end of our prayers right away, but we can know and trust that our God is faithful and he is at work and he's called us to pray. Um, he, he is bringing about, um, uh, I forget the word, <laughs> but he is doing a work, but he's using us. Amen. We are the hands and feet here on earth. Amen. And so we continue to pray and to believe. We have to combine the two that our prayers are effective no matter what we see. That's right. Amen. And that and that is a hard part for us is because we pray and it seems like nothing is happening. But in reality, it is happening. And I had the opportunity of teach at a Bible school all week last week. So be, with everything else that's going on, it, it was a real hard week. 
had to, uh, uh, but it's enjoyable, something I enjoyed doing, uh, training future leaders. And these were uh, mostly Ukrainian students. There's one student from Transnistria, which people don't even know where that is. That's a little strip of Moldova next to Ukraine that Russia has kind of occupied many years ago, kind of like the eastern side of Ukraine that they did in 2014. Uh, I don't want to get into all that discussion, but what's interesting is that um, um, we need to believe that the moment we pray, God does hear our prayer. Mm -hmm. And uh, 1 John 5, 14 and 50 says, this is the confidence that we have in him, in Christ, that if we ask anything according to his will, of course, and if we know his word, we spend time with him, we spend time in the word, we're going to pray according to his will. We ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we yeah, have, not we might or could, yeah. but we have the petitions that we have asked of him. The thing is that that habit, that moment may only be in the spirit realm, in our heart, in our faith, in our spirit, and the faith in our spirit. But tangibly, we may not see it for you know a few seconds or maybe a few days or weeks or, or even months and so on. I've shared testimonies on these but um, it's like we're praying for Ukraine for these situations, and it seems, and then you open up the news, and it seems like it's gotten worse rather than better. And yet, um, and now I'm, you know, then I, I do see some news. I said, wait a minute, we were praying for that area, mm -hmm. and we 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 we've been praying a lot about that Donbas region and the Kharkiv region. And well, we got news, and I don't know if I got a chance to share this in any of the English broadcasts that. Um, one area just out, about 20 kilometers outside of Kharkiv uh, where people were living between two in the valley between two hills so where the fighting was going back and forth and these people were right at the lowest point they were living in their uh, uh, underground shelters un in their their basements they have in, in Ukraine, people that are out in the country and towns and villages, they may have like a dugout to store food like potatoes and things like that because of lack of refrigeration. They'll store it and they'll dig out some of the uh, dirt under the house or under the garden where they could store things. Well, that's where they were spending two months. So he says, we were praying for the believers that were in that town because one of our churches was there and we were concerned that they would not be taken and sent to Russia, maybe Siberia. Some people have been, but uh, we got the news. I think it was Friday night. So I think this occurred on Friday. Uh, and again, I have to check because night here is morning there and vice versa. <laughs> so um, and that I think it was Friday all day. They got a thousand people out of there and amongst them were the believers. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, they left in the morning and they were finally able to get only 20 kilometers away. They are finally able to get them into the bomb shelter where the church is. And the pastor says some of them had lost weight, but they were so happy, so rejoicing that God kept them. God, they said some of them were just, you know, they were on the last bits of food. They had a little bit of jam left that they had stored up, canned from before, and no, nothing else to go with it, but, but at least they had something. And, and they survived, they were able to get out. But uh, so that was an answer to prayer. But you see, we were praying, praying, we weren't seeing that. Finally, we get the news, this happened. Mm -hmm. But also now we're reading the papers that some Russian uh, generals, I think one was killed there. And again, I don't rejoice in anybody dying, but when people are continuing to wage a criminal war and are killing innocent people and are directing that if they don't stop, we've been praying that God will give them a spirit of repentance. And we have heard of, uh, of Russian soldiers putting down their arms and saying, no, we will not fight. We heard that from Belarus as well. But some continue. And some of their top guys have been pushing this. And then we hear that, you know, some of them were you know, taken out, as they say, one uh, was the head, I guess, uh, that got injured was of all people, um, Putin's right hand man for this war. He was down there. So we didn't know we're praying. We're praying that God will you know, confuse them. God will stop them. God will intervene. And we don't know. It seems like nothing is happening because you open the uh, some some page of the news and it seems like the opposite It's like it got worse and they bombed more. And then we find out, whoa, wait a minute. And, and well, one of our 
Pastor Friends got injured in that area, but uh, we're pr praying that God will, and we know that God will provide for him. It's not life-threatening. So it's not life-threatening. And unfortunately, in Kharkiv, as I think we mentioned, their trauma centers or their ICUs have been shut down. The hospitals are overwhelmed. And some of these buildings have been, I think some of the hospitals have been bombed. I'm not positive about Kharkiv, but I know schools have and apartment buildings. And uh, but some of these towns and cities around Kharkiv have seen huge, huge war. Even the city of Kharkiv itself, many attacks, even including rocket attacks. But you see, what I'm saying is that uh, you know we could talk about all the negative, but there is the positive. There yeah. is the positive, and so many people are coming to church that weren't coming to church. And so, like I said, some of these churches. Um, a, a portion of the congregation is someplace else, like Western Ukraine. Some are in some place in Europe, many of them in Poland, waiting, hoping to come back. But here, all these new people are uh, coming and hearing the gospel that had not heard before. Amen. Amen. It, you know, and, and some of these people that have been displaced, we got a report from Pastor Vadim in Poltava. Now, Poltava is a city between Kiev and Kharkiv. So it's been kind of a safe, it has been a safe haven until now. Our pastor friends from Poltava have been making risky trips into regions of Kharkiv and uh, help, taking help to those places and evacuating, and evacuating people. Sometimes under gunfire, they're doing this, driving through forests and difficult roads to get there and pull people out. There's really no roads. And there's some places roads, there's no miserable. roads. And when they get to these places, people are so thankful. They say, why are you doing this, risking your life? So we're believers and we have to do something. We feel we're compelled to help others. And so when we're talking about these pastors and people, they're not just going and helping Christians. They're going and helping people, just people, whatever church they may be from or non-church. <laughs> And these people are just amazed. And, and when they see that they're being the hands and feet of Jesus, their hearts open up, their hearts melt, and they're open to receive also the gospel message of salvation. Okay. So your prayers, um, whether you are in Canada or America or Europe or anywhere in the world, you may be in Asia, and we have uh, a number. Uh, we want to thank those who are in the UK, those who are in Taiwan, who really stepped up to help and to pray and you're standing. And let me tell you, it means so much to the people in Ukraine. When we tell them that people are praying for them, uh, they are so encouraged. They said, we sense those prayers. Sometimes we're so tired, we're in motion. We, we just, you know, just can't even stop to have devotions, but, but we sense those prayers. So, uh, Tom and, and Bib, your prayers are being heard. And that's a very important point that both of you have brought about prayers. We, you know, we just, I just wanted to share some of that because we don't see that in that moment. So we get discouraged or, and the devil will lie to us and say, forget it. We don't even bother praying when well, we should be doing the opposite is persevere and continue Amen. because prayers are being answered. Or like the water, you know, <laughs> I keep talking <laughs> like the water situation <laughs> in, uh, uh, in in uh, Mikolaev in, in the south, uh, the Russians cut off their water supply because they took over the area where the water source is for that city and cut off their water. I mean, this is a good sized city, and that's a city that's been very resistant to the Russian attacks, has not allowed Russians to go towards Odessa on the ground. And so they've, there's been some fierce, fierce fighting in the surrounding region. And yet pastors there are risking their lives and going into enemy territory and taking medicines, taking food and rescuing people out. They evacuated hundreds of children and families out of these uh, war zones. And they themselves are in a war zone. I mean, I got a picture of the pastor would look, you know, sit, you know, just uh, in a garden with, with a rocket planted in the ground. I mean, like amongst the you know, stuff growing in the in the yard. It's crazy. You see the, you know, the, the end of the rocket planted in the ground. It's just stuff like that that you're seeing. And, and you know that God's protection, he, he wrote this or, or, or gave us a voice message two days ago, I think, just unfortunately two churches have had their roofs blown off or something, but their church, by a miracle of God, they haven't been damaged. 
and they continue to meet. And I mean, that isn't, uh, I mean, they, they try to help people of all sorts, you know, of other churches. His wife is the one that evangelized four stories of the hospital, the four levels of the hospital mm -hmm. when she ended up there. Again, it, you know, it's a God thing and a God set up for that. And, and then they've got, there's no water in the city, but there's one spigot in the church that has water and mm -hmm. miraculously. So they're giving water to the hospital and to, uh, you know, really extremely needy people from that. And then he sent us a video of a, uh, there's a stream, a little stream or fountain in the city that has been bubbling and, and uh, underground, water. underground water's coming up and, and people are going oh, with well, big well. bottles and, and filling them up again, a miraculous provision of God. Um, it's just, it's just these stories don't get out there in, in the news. And so if you just get your information from the news, you, all you're going to have is a negative um, outlook, but it's not just, uh, so we're talking a lot about Ukraine, but, but we're praying for other nations. Yeah, I was too. just going to say, we do pray for Ukraine, but we, since um, we have you on here and you're from Canada and Canada has also been on the news because there's a sense of persecution in Canada as well. I know that I saw a post that you put on yesterday about Pastor Palowski and he's under house arrest oh, because he keeps defying the government orders because he's preaching. So you could tell us a little bit about what's happening in Canada and sure. how the people and how the churches are doing there. Well, I mean, we're such a big country, so yeah, what's happening, but um, just, just to recap, but to encourage people about the prayer part, that definitely the prayer of faith is not a prayer just of uh, despondency, although God hears our heart, but I just wanna encourage the people that we can come before the Father to pray these things and that God will respond in when we trust in him. But it's not a word for faith is trust. So we need to trust in him. So yeah. Can just, I just add, um, sorry, <laughs> just add that uh, when you were sharing, Walter, um, what is God's ultimate will that all be saved? Right. So, so we are called to pray for the persecuted church. And we can, our prayers can empower them in their situation mm -hmm. and, and use them to save others. So you never know when you're praying, you may not see the end of your prayers yourself, mm -hmm. but it's happening because God is faithful. And he said, if we pray, he will intercede on our behalf. So mm -hmm. praise the Lord. <laughs> Man. Sorry, honey. No, it's okay. Uh, that's good. No, because sometimes I'm too blunt here. Yeah, trust in the Lord. That's that's the thing. We have to believe, even though we don't see it happening, we have to believe that God will honor us. And, and that's the way the Lord has chosen to do these things. I mean, he spoke the word to existence. So we all think, well, he can speak this word in. He's, he's lifted it or put it on us to talk to him to do it. And that, that's that's love because then we have the free will of to pray and to believe for that. And so just that, you know, the verse, first Timothy two, five, that Jesus is the mediator between man and God. So we do have somebody, I hate using the word somebody, but we have Jesus that will take uh, on our prayers. And, and uh, yeah, I don't want to get bogged down here, but go back to Canada, because that's where my notes are. I think the simplest summation of that, and I, I don't claim to be an authority on this, and, and uh, the only PhD I have is doing the fences on it. But uh, the thing is, is that uh, it's Minority Report. If you guys remember that movie with Tom Cruise, where they preempt, or they're called a pre-crime, and they had these, I guess they had psychics, whatever, but it was, it was a, okay, a little bit of a fluffy movie, but it, it did show that that's the way we're heading, that the government now is gonna step in with the new law, they're trying to pass a law on the internet. This uh, in the states, they're they're calling it what's it called the disinformation, which we called 1984 the Ministry of Truth. Remember George Orwell's novel, and so that in Canada is having the same thing, and and that's going to be basically uh, the Emergency Act, and they're trying to now the the newspapers on that are trying to justify why it happened, and I don't want to get too bogged down here, but to for you folks to pray for us. I mean, it's always. U.S. and Canada helping the world, and of course, Australia, Germany, Great Britain, all these places, but right now, this is us here in the U.S. and Canada. You know, we need prayers, so you folks out in, and that's the way, like I just mentioned earlier, God uses us. He could speak these things, but he needs us 
to trust him. And that, if you can say, is the energy that gives it. So you folks that are watching, maybe like say in Nepal, the folks that are watching in India and Pakistan plus, you pray for us because that works the same way back to you. You sow, you reap, you know, and that's the way it is as well. So we want to be able to do this where we can share, share stuff. But yeah, I, I covet your prayers for Canada, of course, for the US, and you folks have been wonderfully reaping about that. But yeah, we're kind of like the lost, forgotten cousin up here in the great tundra. But, um, you know, it's it's the minority report that they're going to preempt things now. Uh, even stuff like this, maybe on the internet, they'll say, okay, that's hate, hate speech, we'll shut it down. And so they're working towards that, that part of the Emergency Act and such. Uh, um, and basically, the news, the newspapers, all that with you talk about Pastor Proboski, um, he's been a proponent all the way along that we still have the freedom to assemble. Because the Lord says, you know, when you gather together, right? And because of COVID, I understand there's, there's got to be a balance in this whole thing. Some people are so against him without realizing you're, 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 you're also saying, going, you're biting your nose to spice your face from. But uh, whether or not you like the guy, he was thrown into prison and, you know, I just listened to uh, some interviews with the gentleman and, and other people who were witnesses too. So it's not just his side of the story. You know, even the police mistreated him. They threw him in the van, they threw him rock and roll, some really bad suggestive, you know, horrible swearing music to him, driving him to the jail cell to intimidate the poor guy. And then they also, the guards there had told some of the inmates to beat him up. And they said, we will leave the doors unlocked at night so you can go in and do your stuff. The inmates turned around and came to him and says, this is what the guards told us to do. We're not doing that. Mm -hmm. And then they would throw him in solitary confinement just to, to break him, right? And that's why I say prayer, we believe that God will take care of us. And they threw him in solitary confinement, brought him back out. And it's like one of these movies where all the, you know, the prisoners are banging the cells with their cups on. That's exactly so. He was coming back to cells and they're going, uh, free Pastor Pulaski, free Pastor Pulaski. So the, the inmates in the jail see the, in, the injustice that's happening. And they, um, well, like I say, uh, he's now being, well, he's still a bit, uh, well, how do I say it this way? They're, they're trying to throw more charge charges, they're drumming up some charges, but not only him, there's other ministers in Guelph, I believe Ontario, uh, up in Edmonton and other places. So there is a lot of persecution happening in Canada. We are so asleep. We are the Laodicean church right now. You know, in the book of Revelation chapter three, the lazy deceived church, that's the way I, how I call it. But that's it, we're rich, we're increased with goods, we have all this, but we don't know we're poor, wretched, miserable, naked, and that's why we need your prayers is to pray for Canada and the U.S., of course, We pray for Canada that our eyes waken up that we are lazy, we are not. Now, do we go out and do protests? That's another story. The thing is, we got to start by believing God to turn the hearts of our leaders, for Prime right. Minister Trudeau, all the leaders, the conservative leaders, all that, turn their hearts to a, a fear of God upon them. Maybe the veil off their eyes and they actually see what hell is, you know, not just you know, some, something that somebody believes, but it's actually there. And that's what's waiting for them if they continue on this path, because even more so they have it. Like it says, if you offend one of these little ones, it's better for you to have a millstone around your neck and throw them in the ocean. So yes, pray for us. And that's what this is about is to pray. Yeah, we're great. We want to pray for, for these countries. Like, of course, Ukraine, but also like Taiwan, Nepal, and these places that there's stuff happening in the background. These are, I think, the last days. I mean, do I know a date? No, but I know you can tell by the season, even just because I'm in IT, the, the way stuff can go around the world instantaneously, it's, uh, it's all control, you know, and the social ID they're gonna have now, or what they call digital IDs and social credits. I don't wanna get into that, but the point is we gotta pray, we gotta stand up because as Satan comes in like a flood, we will raise up a standard. God will use us to raise up a standard, and how? Well, we got to know what God's will is. That's what Bell, Bell was mentioning. Thank you. That is great timing, guard, dear. Yeah, we have to know what God's will is. So be, before we can go pray this, and I'm guilty, the shotgun prayer, oh, Lord, help them in Ukraine, help us. But focus in. See what God says. I want you to pray for this part. That encourages your faith more, like Pastor Walter, or Brother Walter was mentioning. You know, you never hear about it, but then when you hear about it, hey, yeah, we just pray for them. And that is the Satan's tactic, is to hide the movement of God in these lives. So yeah, that's the, that's the only thing I say The the, somebody asked me about Canada, I say it's minority report, the real thing. It, it's that they're gonna try to pre-crime us now. We, they just had a, another, what they call it, uh, um, 
a convoy of motorcycle guys going to, to, to Ottawa and then a bunch of people you know, protesting freedom and they're arresting them all over the place. And, and uh, that's, that's, that's bad because what's happening is that now the freedom of expression is starting to get tampered little by little. It's, it's the old analog, analogy of the boiling frog in water, you know, all the, you know, mm -hmm. right now, if you throw him hot water, he'd jump out really fast. But put him in lukewarm or cool water, he'd sit there and says, whatever. And this slowly raises the temperature until it's too late. And that's where we are in Canada right now. We are at this boiling point and we just don't realize, and I, I'm saying this collectively myself, that uh, we are basically just going that direction. So we need to speak against this brainwashing that's happening on the news that people look around and say, well, I hear this on the TV, but I see this. And so something has to, so pray that, I always pray that the veil, because that's what happened to me when I got saved. I was a religious person, went to church and all that, and thought I was good with God, you know, though I knew like Monday, you know, Sunday, I, I, I'd, uh, oh, thank you, Lord, God bless, and all that stuff, and then Monday would be swearing. I can't even say Jesus Christ, because that's how much I swore. So I didn't see the hypocrisy until one day I was standing, somebody shared with me, and that's one of the verses I want to share about John 3.3, 3, and and such is that somebody shared with me that you know this is this is the reality to know God personally. I thought, well, I know God, but He's out there somewhere in Saturn, you know, floating around somewhere. No, no, He can be in you if you ask Him to. He's a gentleman; He will not force His way. You need to ask, and that's what a prayer is: is asking, petitioning the Father, but believing He will hear us. And I said, okay, well, come into my life, oh Lord. And it's like something came off my eyes. The next time I stood in church, I thought, wow, you know. So that's what I pray that unveiling of our leadership of what the evils that they are doing um you know you, you can go off into to what's happening out there but the i want to focus on jesus that's that's the one he's the meteor so first timothy 2 5 he's the meteor focus on jesus because he is the one that delivered us he paid our price he shed his blood for us no greater love as man than if he laid down his life for one another. And he rose and he's coming again. And that's the promise we have. It's not some dead guy in the tomb somewhere. He's risen and coming back for us. So let's be ready for him. And yes, um, like I say, when we get into prayer, definitely Taiwan, they have some the saber rattling right now with the destroyers going through the US destroyers, because that is a free strait. But China obviously wants to, to cause trouble. That's only way I can put it nicely. And so we have pray for that island. I mean, Taiwan is small, but um, they're facing this huge powerhouse, but God is protecting them. There's believers in Taiwan and Korea, of course. So, you know, we, we can name all the countries in the world of people watching. I'm sorry, you know, I only know the ones I work with and that's ones like Nepal and India. So yeah, definitely, um, sorry if I got off a rant here, but uh, okay. Canada is latency. And so please pray for us, pray for us that we wake up, that we repent, and that the word of God has free reign. And this is one way through uh, videos like this and sharing until the day they do this ministry where they, I forget the, the proper name of it called, um, but ministry of disinformation, I guess in the US and Canada, it's going under the guise of the Emergency Act, uh, you know, the, to protect the people from misinformation, but they're actually doing the opposite. So um, yeah, pray for us that uh, this opens up. Sorry, but uh, yeah, um, it is a burden, Pastor Kowalski, pray for him, pray for other pastors who were arrested. Um, even the, the trucker convoy, you guys remember that, uh, you know, how short-minded a lot of us are, even the US had a trucker convoy, but um, they've arrested two people there, the leaders of it, and they haven't let them, well, they let one go, the lady, uh, she go with the other guy still in, under these trumped up charges against him. And uh, yet they had some guy just uh, what murder or something like that, and they put him on what 15 day parole or something, and like, and this other one had to come in chains to the court. So there is injustice happening, and you can, and that's why the watch news you can get really upset to all the stuff. But know this: it is happening, and it is evil, and uh, it's the only reason it happens. Who is it? Thomas Jefferson was the U.S. president or whoever said for, for evil to happen, good men must not do anything. Right. Really twisted. But that's just it. You know, let's, let's believe together and stand in prayer over this that uh, God will do something about it. Give us a time of... Amen. And back to your praying, Walter, is that this is a spiritual war. 
Mm -hmm. And so we need to pray because um, Canada has been politically minded for many years. But like Tom was sharing about the frog in the water, it's been subtle and sneaking up on us and we're losing our freedom. And so, yes, we really appreciate prayer. Amen. And we will pray for Canada right now. But prayer is, is so crucial. It is so important. And um, we know that God answers prayer. And Brother Tom had mentioned the, uh, um, the fact that Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and man. Mm -hmm. But do you realize that you too are a mediator Sorry. between people and God? Uh, just like Moses stood in the gap mm -hmm. when God was ready to destroy the people because they were so wicked. And he stood with the people and asked God, please do not destroy them. And uh, we see that uh, God sought for in the Old Testament. The Bible says, God said, I sought for a man to stand in the gap. Um, and so um, it is standing be, be, so that I would not destroy them. You see, it is God's nature to love, to save, to deliver. He does not want to destroy people. Mm -hmm. But if people continue to rebel, continue to sin, continue to walk away from God, there comes the moment when the judgment of God must come upon those people. But God is long-suffering, God is loving, and he gives us opportunities to repent. That's why sometimes we get frustrated because we want to see the answer now. But there's the will of man, and we have a free will, and God does not force us. He waits on us. He'll call us. He'll draw us. So what we can do, and something very important that Brother Tom mentioned earlier, was praying for the removal of the blindness that yes. is over people's eyes. One of the uh, uh, words about the uh, the last days that Jesus said it would be a time of great deception, and we could look at different signs, but the deception is amazing uh, right now. How good is being called evil, and evil is being yeah. good, called good. And uh, you mentioned um, something about this disinformation, whatever you know, it whatever they name, it's usually the opposite. It seems That's at right. least here in the states when they name some sort of law they want to pass is probably the opposite of what they named and that they're that attempting happens, yeah. that, that they attempt to pass and so but we can pray for the removal of the blinders that are in people's eyes spiritually so that they their eyes would be open that they could understand god's word and receive the word and be saved ultimately as bev had mentioned god's desire is that all nations should come to the person of jesus christ mm -hmm. come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved that is god's will for all nations for all people groups for all nationalities and so that is his um, desire. And that's what will ultimately have that God will have uh, a church from all nations, because Jesus said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all nations. Um, and then the end will come. So that that witness has to get to every tribe, every uh, ethnicity in the world, every people group. And it is happening. Um, it is going on, it's continuing. And um, uh, I know some people say, well, you know, the gospel is on the internet. The gospel is on um, uh, on TV. That's not good enough. There's There's got to be that, that personal uh, evangelization. And it's happening. It is even happening in places like Iran in places like Afghanistan, people are coming to Christ. And so there's a hunger in people's lives. And we've been so, uh, so caught up, at least myself, with Ukraine, that we, you know, have, you know, have not been paying a lot of attention to the events here and in Canada. But we're not ignorant of those events. We know that there are many things that are being trying to, sn to sneak yeah. a lot of things in while things are happening in the world, around the world, like this war. And we are are aware that there's these attempts to to curtail our liberties and to uh, curtail the um, to stop the work of God in 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 Ukraine it might be one way by a war here it could be a psychological war it could be laws it could be other ways the devil is not sleeping but we are serving 
uh, God and God, um, God has all power, but he doesn't exert that power without our, our invitation. That invitation is by prayer. We invite God into our lives, into our circumstances, our home, our city, our state, our country. But we also, uh, so we need to do that. And whether we are in America or Canada or in Nepal or India or Taiwan or China or um, in uh, Ukraine or Russia or Poland, it doesn't matter. Or in Cuba or in uh, Argentina or Brazil, we need to invite God into our lives. He doesn't force himself in. And, you know, there's always that question, why did God allow? Well, who's ruling on the earth, you know? It's not that God wants that. God doesn't force his way. Mm -hmm. He waits for us to invite him in. And, uh, and there's the other aspect of prayer, and that's one of the things I was also teaching at the Bible school. There's the spiritual warfare aspect, which Bev had mentioned, because we ask God to do certain things. But there are certain things that we have to do. One of those, we have certain powers. Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. And then he commissioned the church. He commissioned us, his representatives here on earth, to go and do certain things like preach the gospel, pray for the people, heal the sick. So God will do his part, but we've got to do our part. When we do our part, God comes through. He's God, faithful. Yeah. yeah, he confirms Amen. with signs, with miracles, with answer to prayer. And I'm a recipient of, uh, you know, prayer of uh, intercession. When I was detained in the Soviet Union back in the day for taking a whole lot of Bibles there, uh, there were people around the world that were interceding for me. I did not even realize the amount of danger that I was in. But uh, months later, I ran into people in different countries and they would ask me, where were you on such a date? I said, why are you asking me? And they said, because I was feeling such a burden to pray for you. I said, so there was a real big need and I had to pray for you for these days. And I said, well, thank you very much because um, I'm a recipient of those prayers. If you had not prayed, perhaps I wouldn't be here. So your prayers and our prayers, and we've heard that from pastors already, you know, uh, some of them yes, being in, 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 in Ukraine. I mean, there's a pastor who told us, thank you for praying us. He says, you know, I, because we always kind of, you know, to, to ask them to be careful and pray, try to pray with them before they go. As they leave, they're tra traversing dangerous roads. There are snipers on some of these roads. Nobody wants to go. And mines. And mines in places. Yes, mines. We've heard of mines. Yeah. Yes. And so they get there. People are just amazed. How did you get here? Um, I mean, there's an, one uh, brother who was a friend of us who was working as a chaplain going to the front lines. The soldiers are shocked that he got there uh, with his team. They brought him aid. And, and, and they're just shocked. It's, you know, it's, it's a witness. Pray for them. And so they say one, one pastor, uh, Pastor Sergey, for example, um, he told us he was he stopped. They stopped for 15 minutes to pray. And he says he always wants to make sure he has a peace about going to certain areas. They were traveling already. They stopped for 15 minutes. Well, when they got there, they found out that had they not stopped for those 15 minutes, there was a bomb that fell right mm -hmm. there. And then they went there, they brought in the supplies, they packed the plant. It's supposed to hold 10 people. They packed with as many as they could get out of there because people were desperate to leave. I think he said they put 21 time in his van plus other vans that they had. And uh, I'm not suggesting you do that, folks. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that's what they did. It's wartime. Uh, it's wartime. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. he says, yeah, it it. Been us out 15 minutes out of that town, he gets a call from one of the ladies who was helping to organize things there. He said, you know, she's just weeping. He says, what happened? He says, there was a bomb that fell 15 minutes after you left. And uh, my house no longer has a roof. It's, it's gone. I've got no place to live. And, and this was just like right there where they had just been. So, you know, in a number of testimonies, one time it was like 10 seconds after one of the volunteers in Kharkiv left a place where he just delivered help. 10 seconds. I mean, literally just got in the car and drove out of that like a block or two, but maybe not even that. 10 seconds. I don't know how long you can drive for 10 seconds. He says, wham, well, there was a, an attack right there. Where, I mean, he just got to the church uh, with an ashen face realizing what just happened. I mean, 10 seconds. But you see, this is prayer being answered, God intervening, God protecting and, and so please, 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 
Do not stop praying. And it's, it's for Ukraine. Amen. It's for Canada. It's for the U.S., it's for Nepal, for India, for Taiwan, for Cuba, for whatever your situation is, uh, your country. You pray for your country. You might be watching us in Africa, maybe in Kenya or Nigeria. You can pray. You can believe for your situation, for your city, for for the, the surrounding situation around you. So uh, uh, we could keep... Oh my, this hour has gone so fast. Uh, we need to stop and pray. That's what we're here for. I, Can I just interject? Yes. The fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Yeah. And every person, all four of us and everyone that are, is in hearing of this, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We can't do anything in ourselves, but we've been made righteous. So that our fervent prayers can avail much. Amen. 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 Well, let's let's pray right now, and uh, let's pray first of all for Canada, um, and then we're going to ask you to pray for Ukraine, uh, Tom. Okay, <laughs> or Bab, as, as whoever feels led. But uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring up the nation of Canada. And Father, we bind every principality, every ruler of darkness of this age over the nation of Canada. We bind it in the name of Jesus Christ. We bring down the principalities over the nation of Canada, over the province of Alberta, the province of British Columbia, Ontario, yes, Saskatchewan, and, uh, oh, Father, over er Ontario and every part of Canada, Quebec, yes, Father, Jesus. the name of Jesus Christ, even the Northwest Territories, Lord, over every corner, every part of Canada, we bring down those uh, principalities, those rulers of darkness that have been putting a stranglehold on the nation of Canada, the freedoms in Canada, yes, and Jesus. particularly on the religious Jesus. freedoms. And in the name yes, of Jesus, Jesus Christ, we say no to them. We arrest yes, their Jesus. activities in the spirit yes. realm, and we release salvation. We release deliverance. We release mm -hmm. revival and blessing over the nation of Canada, we yes, speak Lord deliverance Jesus. in the yes, name of Lord Jesus Jesus. Christ. And we come Ye against that blindness Lord. over the Ye people's eyes, yes, whether they be in politics Jesus. or in other Christ positions Christ. of authority Jesus. in any and every province, Jesus. city, and uh, region. And in the name of yes. Jesus Christ, we pray that the eyes of their understanding would yes. be open and that they would Jesus. be open to Jesus Christ of receiving Jesus. Christ Jesus. into Jesus. their lives Jesus. and following after him. Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, Jesus. we Thank find God. those satanic attacks yes. against Jesus. Canada Jesus. and we Jesus. forbid them from Jesus. continuing to destroy yes. that Jesus. nation. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for salvation, yes, healing, deliverance. And Lord, we thank you yes. that Canada shall receive revival once again in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Bev or Tom, would you lead uh, in prayer for Ukraine and other nations as the Lord leads? Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this honor that we can all pray and join together in agreement. And we stand for justice because our God stands for justice. We pray for justice yes. for Ukraine. We pray that thy will be done, thy kingdom come amongst these, these, um, these terrible wars, Father, that we thank you that we've already heard stories of your light going in those dark, dark places. Mm -hmm. So we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for wisdom for all the Christians, the Ukraine Christians, the Russian Christians. Mm -hmm. Father, they're all under persecution of one sort. In fact, we're all under persecution in some sort. Mm -hmm. So we thank you, Father, that in the midst of persecution, we, you will reign. You have already won. 
Thanks be to God who always causes us to, to triumph. triumph. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Lord, we pray. We pray for uh, Nepal. We pray for India, Pakistan, Taiwan, Taiwan. The, the, the things are happening now, the, the saber railing. Father, we pray peace over that area. Uh, Lord, I pray that you, like Psalm 91, um, 11, you give your angels charge, even, like, even for the pastors in Ukraine. Psalm 91, they give the angels charge over them to keep them all their ways, Lord. We pray over Taiwan that the, 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 uh, a, a descaling of what's happening in there, Lord. We pray peace in that area. Uh, for India, we pray Pakistan and India have issues there, Lord. We pray peace that the word of God go through that. And like Bev was mentioning, I just saw lights coming through those dark cloud, like into Ukraine and, and into Pakistan and India. And I, I pray this light breaks through the darkness and the streams of light hit the people. And like people are attracted to light. I uh, believe that people will be attracted and say, why do you have this peace in you? I pray this light, our light, shine so forth in this place. Um, Nepal, of course, that's got a place in my heart, Lord, continue to, to move in that place and be a light in that area and strengthen them and encourage them, Father. Don't let them look to the riches, but look to the riches of Christ in there. You know, um, thank you, Lord, for these things that uh, they pray for us. And I pray for these people like in, in, in the Kenya, and, and these African cont continents that the light goes forth and it comes through and they can see what's happening. Lord, we can name all the countries, South America, South Asia, Middle East. Uh, Lord, I pray for all these, the Scandinavian countries. Lord, I pray your light breaks through this cloud of darkness that's over this land of, of well, the world, but over Canada. I'm sorry, I'm bouncing over, but I'm just seeing these lights come through the clouds. And Father, I pray more light break through and disperse the darkness. Darkness cannot overcome light. Light overcomes darkness. And the light of the word, the, yeah. the gospel of Jesus Christ, be set forth into this country once again, like Brother uh, brother uh, Walter prayed, that the revival here, revival starts with us, and Lord, let this be a break forth of light in this area, and give us that, give us this time of reprieve to get the word once more out for the people to repent, we pray. I pray this in Jesus' name, that Lord, you give grace to us, and you give grace to the hearers of this message, Lord, to encourage them, like Ben was mentioned, encourage them that thy will be done, thy kingdom come on earth, and we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, and we know that your heart is that all be saved. Yes. So we speak that forth in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, call to the Be people. saved. Yeah. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, open your heart right now and say, Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I admit that. Yes, I believe that Jesus died on the cross and resurrected from the dead. And I received Jesus yes, Christ Jesus into my heart Lord. as my one and only Savior. Save me, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you Amen. pray that prayer sincerely, Jesus has come into your heart. And two, three things every day. Amen, brother. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Read, get, get, Go ahead, uh, tell us what are the three things. <laughs> well, the one I wanted to share, if I could, is John 3 3. You must be born again. I know that that word is being abused and mocked, but it, it is in the Bible. That's the verse that the Lord, that veil came off my eye. You must be born again. I thought, like Nicodemus, what's this born again thing? It's giving your heart. See, like I mentioned earlier, God is a gentleman. He's, the Holy Spirit is not going to push. He will call you. You have to respond. And that's the free will you have. So you must be born again. It's a must. It's not like, well, it's your choice. It is. But what do you want to step in front of the trainer and get out of the way? I want to get out of the way. I don't want to go to hell. So I said, okay, God, what's this born again thing? And he opened it up to John 14, 6, where it says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay. But no man comes unto the Father but by him. So this is the verse. Sorry, Bill, three things. Yeah, I was thinking, I was going three, John 3, 3. But yes, <laughs> if you pray this prayer, and that's what I wanted to, to yes, the, the altar call. We haven't seen that happen in churches as much. But yes, you must be born again. Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. Not all roads lead to God. There's only through Jesus. That's why that first Timothy, he is the mediator between you and me. So you do have that. And we just saw that uh, um, the promises you have. I was saying like the angels protecting us. That's all for the believer if you receive Christ. And so, yes, um, 
ask Jesus into your heart, become born again. And the three things are, if I got them right, is uh, read your Bible, get a Bible. This is God's word. It's, you know, when I work on a car, you know, I know I used to do it the old MacGyver way, this duct tape and it works, but now I actually start to read the manual. And this is our life manual. So read the Bible, ask, you know, the gospel of John is a good one to start with. You just flip the Bible and um, it's about the fourth gospel in from the New Testament. Just start reading about God's love and that's it. God is still in control. And so we yeah, have be born again, receive Jesus into your heart. And um, what's the second one? I know the other ones go find Bible believing church. What's the second? First of all, it is pray every day. Talk pray every to day. Him. Oh, this is what this is all about. <laughs> Read his word. And thirdly, tell others. Yes, Jesus yes. is your Savior. God so loved the world that he gave Game his only, only begotten Son. John that whosoever believes in him shall never perish, but have everlasting life. life. Amen. 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 Nina, would you pray for America yes. as well? We need we to pray for America. The way America goes, says, the world goes. So we are going to pray together and believe for these strongholds in this country that are evil to come down in Jesus' name. So Father, we come before you today and we ask that your kingdom come and that your will will be done in this nation on earth as it is in heaven, Father. Father, revive us again. May the church operate in the authority that you have given us to see demonic strongholds fall. Father, fill your church with renewed faith and expectancy. May revival start with us first. Empower us, the church, to move in supernatural power, demonstrating in signs and wonders for the world to see. Father, send revival to every town, every city, every state. Pour out your spirit upon the state capitals. May your Holy Spirit hover over this nation, also Canada, awaking the hearts of people. Father, we pray for every politician in this country to be drawn to you, to acknowledge you as their Lord and Savior. Remove those who continue to willingly deceive and do evil. Father, I pray for the children in this country that you would protect and shield their minds. Yes. Continue to raise up parents to stand up and say no to the woke agenda. Father, pour out your revival on the youth. Reveal yourself to them. Father, forgive us, the church, for allowing the enemy to continue to abort innocent lives. We repent from this atrocity. Father, as the Supreme Court deliberates abortion laws, may they have compassion to save lives, not kill lives. May they rule with integrity and not be swayed by popular agendas. Father, our hearts go out to the children being trafficked and are suffering. Lord, expose those who are harming the children. May these children be found and be set free in Jesus' name. And we also bind the Antichrist spirit that has come against this country and Canada and the world. We stand against all demonic powers of perversion, deception, murder, hatred, lawlessness in Jesus' name. Father, we release the spirit of your love to bring repentance over the nations, Father. Empower all of us with the boldness of the Holy Spirit. Let your remnant move as a mighty army to declare and establish, Lord, Jesus, yes. over the United States of America and all over this globe. We Amen. pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We yes. speak the same for Canada yes. and for Mexico and, and for Australia, Australia New, Zealand. New Zealand, the United yes, Kingdom and Europe and other parts of the yes, world. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up those that may yes. be sick or afflicted. As they're watching this broadcast right now, I speak yes, peace to that one yes. who needs peace in his or her heart. I speak healing to that one who is suffering with a physical ailment right now. Be healed in Jesus' yes, Lord, name Lord, right Lord, Lord, now. Oh, God's power is touching you right now in your hands, in your feet, in your in, uh, stomach, in your internal mm -hmm. organs. Receive your healing. I, I see yeah. the Lord touching somebody's heart. Receive yes, healing Jesus. in your heart, your blood pressure. Be normalized yes. in Jesus' name and I right see, now. See somebody's um, having migraines, and God is healing that right now. You've been praying for a long time, but God said, now is the time. Accept your healing. No more migraines in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is healing you right now. Receive. Just begin yes. to thank him. Uh, check yourself. Try to do what you could not do. 
believing that Jesus yes, Christ Jesus. has touched you and healed you. you amen and amen. amen. Well, God richly bless you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, happy anniversary to yes. Tom and Bev. Happy uh, success. They, uh, <laughs> this is God's years. grace, by the way. This is God's grace because we went through some troubled times. This is God's grace that we're still here. Praise the Lord. So if you want, there is hope. There is hope. Uh, Always there's hope. A, take bending the knee and, and apologizing and saying, I'm, so, <laughs> so, 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 uh, I'm wrong. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it is. You know, it's miraculous, isn't it? How God can keep us growing together. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God is good and he manifests his goodness yes. in us when we allow him and to, and to, to do and that. And when we're humble. And when we're humble. <laughs> yes. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you folks for joining us. Share this broadcast. Yeah. And uh, we continue uh, to support uh, evangelism around the world. I'm planning to head to Nepal, hopefully with Nina next month. Yeah, and and uh, we're looking forward to that. Yeah, but uh, in the meantime, we are here. We're continuing to move ahead and to minister mm -hmm. uh, to the needs around the world. And I want to mention that we continue to pray for Ukraine and support pastors. It's not that we're supporting the pastor for his own benefit. Yeah, uh, of course, we're supporting the help, helping people, but the help we're sending through pastors to their communities. Um, we've been able to uh, send substantial help. We continue to do that to uh, these war zones, and they need our prayers. They need our support. If you want to have a part in that, do uh, you can do that by check to the address written right above my head, or you can go to our web page right now, mm -hmm. globalvisionministries.org, and press the donate button. It'll take you to PayPal or Givelify if you're in the U.S., and you can give immediately. 100% of what you designate for Ukraine is going to Ukraine. Thank you all for having already donated, that mm -hmm. have donated, and thank you for those that will be doing so. The needs are great, and um, and it's just it's just amazing, Pastor. Uh, several have told us mm -hmm. it's like you knew of our need before we asked. Before we asked, and it know? was there. They were in tears. Was there. They were just mm -hmm. in tears when the help arrived. So uh, we cannot mm -hmm. do that without your participation and we cannot do all that we do without people like tom and bev um, their help in getting the word out and getting these broadcasts and uh, praying uh, not only mm -hmm. praying but getting these out mm -hmm. so you could see these broadcasts That's right so thank you so much uh tom and bev thanks uh, for having all us. the glory yes. goes to god yes like the football yeah. players they always point out but you know right. we're pointing to jesus yes <laughs> Amen. 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 God richly bless you. And, and remember, remember, Jesus Christ, Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.